Okay. Chopin, revolutionary etude. Is that the most famous one? Perhaps, yeah, perhaps. It is not exceedingly difficult for those of you who think you might be at the level to do it. Uh, it's not the hardest of the etudes, but none of the etudes are easy, right? So why is it called the revolutionary etude? It was written around, uh, oh boy, I'm going to get in trouble here because I can't remember exactly my facts, but there was an uprising around the time it was written. Let me pull that up here so I can tell you exactly why this is called the revolutionary etude here. Okay. I just don't want to say some random things that aren't true. Okay, so this etude was written at the same time as the November Uprising in 1831. Okay, this is from Wikipedia here. Upon the conclusion of Poland's failed revolution against Russia. Okay. Uh, he cried, I believe that is Chopin. All this has caused me much pain. Who could have foreseen? Unlike etudes of pre prior periods, works designed to emphasize and develop particular aspects of musical technique, the romantic etudes of composers such as Chopin and Liszt are fully developed musical concert pieces. Okay, so you know that, right? This is uh, a new thing by Chopin. Uh, Liszt was, he wrote etudes after Chopin. But Chopin started this uh, etudes, which are actual concert pieces, not just little exercises, you know, or pieces that are, you know, kind of mundane and not something you would play in a concert, right? Like Cherny, for example. This is actually uh, a masterpiece of its own in spite of being an etude. Okay, so yeah. how do we practice this? That's the question. That's how I like to teach it. The four notes that go down. So these four here. Group them like that. And you see we have the accent there on the second finger or the third of those four notes. So that's going to help. If you practice this, the good thing about it is you also have there's an impulse. It's like making a circular motion. So that impulse gives you a little push. And then once you're used to doing this, at that speed, you're just one step away from doing that. It's the same thing except without stopping, right? Now, this doesn't actually go right? It's more like going all the way to here. Okay? And interestingly, in this chord, you would kind of... It sounds like a diminished seventh, but this is a diminished seventh with A flat, and he puts a G instead. However, you do have the A flat is the first note in the left hand. So I think you can kind of show that note in a graceful way, you know, not not is it a little too intense. And then make it make it go. the second one so that's the same thing there we're going all the way to here yum putty trying to make an arrow here we're gonna get better at this <laughs> there we go does that look like an arrow enough okay and then same thing yum 
notice how he added that extra accent there. So with fire, con fuoco. So to do that, you can show those take a tiny bit of time to show the first three notes, let's say. Okay, I like to come down here so that we can build up. Right, because he does right crescendo here. So if you start a little softer here, that's going to help. Uh, one more thing before we go on. Here, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one. This one, you have to practice this jump, of course, right? What, we get this, you have that jump. And this one, you could do this one a little wider. Stretch it so it's a little more fatty. But this one, go straight into it. And this one, stretch it. So it's going to show that. Um, let's see how where we yeah let, that's that's good like that yum pati that it's more important yep keep redrawing these arrows until we get them nice there we go so yum buddy and second one yum pada you see how the first one is kind of lean and the second one is a little fat so we like that okay. Drinking water with a headset. That's a new thing to get used to. Okay. That's the more most important one. I think here, in general, people play this piece too loud. Okay? It's more convincing in a way to play this uh, light, if you can, and then adjust accordingly. Because nine times out of ten is just too loud. Interestingly, Chopin doesn't write many fortissimos in this piece. There is, uh, oh, I have to do that for every page, eh? Okay, that's okay. There is one fortissimo, there's none here. Might depend on the edition. There's some slight differences in uh, this internet copy. It's not the greatest, and we'll, we'll look at that. But there is a fortissimo there where you, actually where you see it here, this is not a fortissimo. This one here. Yeah, I, I we'll go in order, okay? Because otherwise it's too complicated with this edition. So, not very many fortissimos Chopin writes. And, you know, some of his students said, uh, af on hearing Chopin actually play live, they said that he never played loud. He never played anything loud. Uh, but everything was so colorful. There was so many different colors. There was a, there was a clear change of mood and dynamics uh, without him necessarily playing loud. There goes our camera on the top. I could get a second battery in there. Okay, we got our overhead camera back. See, there we are. Okay, very good. All right, so there you have it. Chopin didn't play so loud. So this could sound much better instead of playing... <laughs> Okay, that's one way of doing it. Now, what if this piece, what if we went a little over the top and played it really light? give you a little more space you know maybe some things were, were I executed better in the first delivery there but I think there's a case to be made here especially in all the left hand that's going you don't want it to overpower the right hand anyway yeah, yeah, yeah. 
just slight waves. And really what's happening is, see this is the top of our little swell here in the left hand. And really that's kind of just an answer to the E in the right hand. So right. The other thing that we kind of saw here is in this things that you have in the beginning. If you start out, you better come down a little bit so that you can finish in a crescendo. You do want a crescendo with this. So you send it all the way to the right hand here. Same thing, come down. Okay, we got to go on or spend an hour on the first page here. Okay, pedal. Here's a good question. How much pedal to put or not, right? That is a very good question. So, uh, I think in general, the more you change the pedal, the clearer things are, right? Uh, Hanley Edition is not the greatest for this, but that's okay. Uh, if you can, go for the Polish editions. They're the best. There's the Jan Ekie edition that looks like this. And there's also the Paderewski edition that looks like this. They're both very good. The Jan Ekie one probably has a little bit more uh, written there, a little bit of extra information. So these pedal markings that you see in this score, like, you know, this sort of stuff there, they're they're not actually written by Chopin. And it's very difficult for composers to write pedal markings in general anyway. So yeah, we're definitely gonna look at some pedal here. Like for example, you, can, you have to experiment. If you lift the pedal up a bit, get to this. Does that sound good? Same thing. Kind of the way it's written here. It's not so bad the way it's written. Another place we'll have pedal issues. Let's do this correctly here. Is going to be in this thing here. Yum. Right? If there's too much pedal, not so interesting as much as if you pedal, pedal, pedal. Then we can actually hear what's going on in the left hand there, and that's really nice. <clears throat> Okay, so looking at the beginning here, we had this one is much more important. Must be why he wrote piano uh, here. Whoops, I'm erasing stuff. This piano must be just to make sure that this one is in contrast with that one. He still wanted a swell. And this one louder, see. Uh, another thing, just a last note on the left hand here, because this is really, you know, the major issue here, I think, for most pianists, is playing everything in the left hand too loud. Well, know attempting to do something like the swell he wrote all we really need to hear is is this so see how gentle this can be right not 
going to be way too loud. So you, this is really gentle. Then the last four notes can be more in crescendo. You, and that gives a good effect. You hit it again. Same thing there. All right. Yeah. it. Uh, yeah. The bass is obviously important here. We're going from C to B, B flat and A, and then A flat and G, a nice chromatic line. Right, so that should be clear. More on the second beat here, that's where the accent is. Yep. I kind of like to do this like this. That's personal. I like to take a little time here, back off a little bit, and still do this accent, but much more gentle than the others. That's that's my way of doing it. Yep. So that's one way you can do that. And if you look in the Yannick Ye edition, you'll see that many times, this is a big confusion with Chopin. He's writing uh, accents that look kind of like diminuendos. And often, we're not sure whether they're accents, like large accents or diminuendos. So they did that in the Yannick Ye edition. And those accents that are excessively long, they look more like diminuendos. And Paderewski just has simple accents. So. That might help you decipher that. I think it's a good idea here if you do this silence here, actually release the right hand, and then change the pedal there. OK, I think we're moving on here. Sotto voce, that means um, muffled, right? A muffled sound or a muted sound. Muffled, there we go. Okay. Okay, so now is where you can really go uh, extreme with the light. Right? This has to be... All of this is very light. And then that comes out a little bit. This time, crescendo. I like to come down here. Again, that's, that's how I like it. Come back down here. a new layer on this one so we'll just go with what we have here okay see those these notes here yeah -da -da. that's what should come out here maybe one of the harder things the left hand has to do in this piece yeah. so now okay whoops we'll have more Things written here. All right, we already said the pedal. New pedal, new pedal. So change the pedal often here. I'm just going to write, change pedal often. Why don't composers just write that instead of <laughs> actually writing pedal markings? It's very complicated. <laughs> Just like the beginning, this stuff is kind of you're starting a, a line in the left hand, and it's going to the right hand. 
And then you start again. Yeah, da 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 yum, buddy. And it's going to the right hand. And I like to do this one. A little less. Okay, that's my way of doing it again. Come down here. We're going to start a big build up from here. Right? Yada, yada. And then again, yada, with a very long uh, counterpoint or whatever you want to call it in the left hand. Okay, so that would be Tiam Pam Badam. Number one, a little bit more. Tiam Badam. Okay, and then Yam Badi Dum Badam. This one here. A little bit less. How does that sound? Once more. Something like that. Right? It's just so it doesn't sound loud all the time. It's not really going to be convincing, right? Okay, I do my best, okay? I haven't spent enough time on this left hand. It, it is tricky, okay? So here we go. That's a little less. And then even less here. And we start this build up here. A little bit more, next level. Is that a mistake there? That is a very funny mistake. They put an, an E natural, an octave too low. Okay, it's not there. It's just right here. Okay. <laughs> very funny. And somehow that has to get to there. Okay, I have here uh, in the Ecchie edition a Sforzando like this. Okay. In the Paderewski edition, you can check in your Henley edition if that's what you're using, what you have there. Uh, in the Paderewski, even different, there's only a forte, okay, without the, the little Z next to it, making it a sforzando. So is it a fortissimo? Is it a sforzando? Is it a for forte? Chopin did not write the fortissimo, okay? He didn't write it. So, but it does feel like uh, the peak of our summit. However, he does write fortissimo right here, where we have this one, okay? So that one he did write. So this can be very confusing. Mm -hmm. That's very good. I know this, again, it is swells written by Chopin. I'm much more inclined to do this, okay? I know I'm doing the opposite of what Chopin wrote. How could you do the opposite of what Chopin wrote? To be honest, Chopin did it himself. You know, Liszt said it about Chopin. He would hear, listen to him play, and he would do the opposite of what he wrote. So uh, we think that Chopin was m a much more uh, unbelievable improviser than a composer who can write things down on paper. It didn't seem to be uh, uh, for him the way it is for Beethoven. It's so exact and, and he's able to write down exactly the way he wants it to be. Chopin is not like that. So uh, I think in this case, what's important is the D flat here and then the D natural here, right? So, and he even wrote, isn't there an accent? on one of those notes. Again, three different editions, three different information. Okay, in the Paderewski, most likely my favorite edition, the more I look at all these things, uh, he does have an accent uh, right here, okay? This is Paderewski, put an accent here. So that note is important. And then here on, on, this, on the D natural, he didn't write an accent. You know, uh, I would just add one here. Let's see if we could make that look a little better. Here's a little accent. There we go. Ah, I'm erasing it. Sorry. Here we go. 
put an accent on that D natural. It's really important. We want to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> showing the difference in the harmony. So this again, how I like doing it, you know, I would really get a strong bass here and then play a little softer the left hand to make a wave instead of playing everything loud. It would make a nicer shape. Also put a five here. It's it's this is an awkward part, and putting a five instead of a four in that arpeggio. Five one two three five one two three five. You might find that a little easier there. So that's what I do. Here is a wheel. Let's see how this looks like here. So see if I exaggerate it. But then when you're playing fast, you, the movement becomes very small. I think I was doing it backwards. There we go. So lots of technical things we could be looking in, in here, which we aren't exactly spending too much time. Okay, continuing with this. We have our D natural there. Yeah. So again, that left hand needs that sweeping motion. If you play it loud all the time, you don't get to make waves, right? A wave can only happen because it's higher than the, the level of the ocean anyway. So we need that sort of thing. have our markings already there. Yeah, this is an arrow. <laughs> That's what it is. Slightly different from the first time, right? We have a G here. And just like we said in the beginning, this sounds very good if this can be and then this one thicker. It's more convincing as the final one. This fortissimo, Chopin also wrote that fortissimo. There's not one F there, there's two. Um, in the Paderewski edition, in the Ekie edition, you have one. What to do? You're gonna have to make sense of this stuff somehow. So somehow, you know, the things in the Paderewski edition to me just seem to make more sense. There's, there's a really sensical approach to it. That's yam, ba, yam, dee, da, 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 da. How can that be anything but the top of the hill here or the climax, you know? That seems very important to me. So I like that double F. Okay, going on, we have those little alterations in the right hand. <laughs> Let's look at that a little. Uh, what's more important is when you have parts of those uh, rhythms in the right hand that are triplets and parts that are 16th notes. Same thing here. I think, again, this is my experience with students. They play. They play this too fast. Make it different. Sorry, I keep missing that. See? Right? So this is a different rhythm than this. How did I fix the C? Somehow it felt right to come a little up with the rest. 
that seemed to do it for me, just this movement. Yadim, tadim, tadim. Okay, this one is a little annoying too, right? One, two, four, five, most likely. Unless you do, this is a silly fingering. I like it, but I don't think it works very well. One, two, five, crossover with a three. But it's very dangerous. You're likely to miss the top note. It's probably better to go one, two, four, five. Yeah. So, in fact, if you could slow down the triplets a little bit and then go full tempo with the 16th notes, that would show the difference between them more, and that's nice. So, instead of playing this, you play. See how that's more interesting? Same thing here. Instead of playing, you play. This is what's fast, right? Those yadarim pada. This is fast, and this mpapam is slower. Mpapa yadari pada dam. And then you have another fast one here. Yada yadari. These are the fast notes. And then this is different. It's slower. Instead of. And it's easier to play that way. So make the difference between the triplets and the 16th notes and be very clear about where things go here. had uh, two students recently not line up uh, those notes correctly with the right hand and left hand. It might be a, uh, I'm sure they're not the only one, so that's why I say it. Okay, yadam badadim padadam badadam. Again, if you cut the right hand, do a little pedal change there, that's nice. It's going to be just a little more clear. So, this is where things change. <laughs> different from the first time. We go to D flat major. Okay, here's our D flat major. We'll put the M there for major. This crescendo is really important. You gotta do it the best you can with the left hand. <laughs> right hand can't crescendo, so it's kind of like you have to give the illusion of this note in the right hand doing the crescendo, even though the left hand has to do it. What is the relationship between D flat major and C minor? Here's a theoretic, theor theoretical question. What is the relationship? It's half a tone higher than the tonic on a major key. That's the Neapolitan key in relationship to the original key of this piece, which we're still in C minor right here. We are going to the Neapolitan key and we're gonna have more of it. Do this next one a little less, less than before, less than the last one. Okay, uh, another way of writing this would be with a plus sign here, that means more, and then a minus sign, that means less than the plus, whatever the plus is. So don't do those the same. You don't want to. It's calming down from here. This is the high point. of like doing this pedal here. A little less loud, more colorful. Same thing with those swells on the left hand. Four, 
one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, five. That is a, that, that one's a little more complicated, yeah? What do we have in Paderewski? Three, two, one, two, three, four. Didn't write anything. Two, three, one on the on the C flat. Yeah, no. It could be this Paderewski says one, two here. Can't be done that way. Now here he writes piano. We've really come down to piano here like this. However, there is a sforzando. I would treat this as a, a kind of ringing, ringing accent, mostly with the top, the top note. Let's say ringing accent top. The top note is important. Yeah. That kind of sound. But much, 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 much calmer, okay? Again, I say this because of uh, just the tendency I see is that everyone plays this way too loud, this part. Calm, okay? Here's the one part of the piece that's, that's uh, expressive in a more... Um, uh, gentle way, let's say. Yeah. Here's our C minor here. Okay, and then here's the Neapolitan. Isn't that spooky or Neapolitan? Put an N there for Neapolitan. the most beautiful part of this etude. And then we go back to the dominant here, yeah? Dominant with the double appoggiatura is heard there. So it's kind of like C minor second inversion. Okay, the other thing is these notes, yada da da dee, yada da da dee. And this one here, pa da da dee. I think you only really need the first one. This, he does write it, okay? But you don't have to show it. Show the first note in, the, in each bar. Maybe the same thing here. More of that one, less of this one, okay? Same thing here. We want to hear this D, okay? This D right here. And less of that D, not so much the second one, okay? So how do you play that D? You don't want it to be It shouldn't interfere or compete with the melody. Just kind of um, uh, support it. And then you have this E flat here, and I love to change the pedal. Okay, yeah. isn't that nice? Now, Napolitan. Yeah. Why do I roll that? Because it's in the Paderewski edition. Okay, blum, 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 blum. Roll that chord. Yeah. I've seen also in another online version, you might have that. I'm just checking in the Yannick edition. Dolce written there. And uh, again, Chopin did not write Dolce. Uh, we have also in Paderewski and okay, a little crescendo here, but I like that Dolce. Dolce means sweet and tender, yeah? So there is something like that there. Oh, well, he didn't write it himself, Chopin. <laughs> Now we have this little menacing thing in the background. Everything seems like it's going to be calm, right? We're going to just finish this piece quiet, and you know we're not. Right? Something is going on. There's some, 
if there's some menacing movement there, I'm just going to erase these things. Ah! Boy. Okay. So you. could give a slight, slight, slight crescendo here. That would help. Oh, for where you bring in the right hand. And now look at this, left hand. Dee, da, 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 dee. We went up to the B flat. And then dee, da, 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 da. And now we're going to the G. It's falling down kind of like a leaf that's doing this. Dee, da, 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 now look at that B flat was on the second beat and the G was on the fourth beat and now this D is on the end of one so it's winding down I like to hear these notes that's kind of nice. Even maybe a slightly dry could make that very interesting. Sotto voce, very quiet here. As if like there's this calm, this still moment before some kind of explosion. So you have to play with that with your audience and that D flat is very alarming yeah D flat oh, we only had C's here a C in the right hand and in the middle and a C in the bass and now this D flat here very spooky and again here don't slow down this too much, okay? Because you will slow down the second one. So it will just show the structure better if you keep it a little straight. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. I've seen some bad online editions that put this forte right here. Wrong, okay? This is very soft. Okay. Yeah, no, no. Okay, so that last It's really fun to play. Uh, those last half notes, stretch them. Okay, stretch these half notes so they're a little more fat let's say okay and then pom pom this is you know these are subtleties that i think we'd have to refine together in one of the master classes okay so when you come to my master class and play this piece or or watch someone else play it we'll work on refining the subtlety to it you know so e two three four one two see how we stretch that bar a little two three four one two three four one Two, three, four, one, two. That sounds really convincing as a finale if you do that versus staying completely in time, which sounds like this. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Two. Right? We need that one, two, three, four, one, two. And the last two chords, yum, pum. Both of them need a strong attack, right? If you do yum. That's kind of weird, right? One, two, three, four, one. Yeah. Biam, tam, yam. It's very disappointing. So both of those chords, I would do the same kind of attack for each of them. The same attack. Not one of them longer, not one of them shorter, uh, and not one of them softer or louder than the other. It's more like, you know, uh, strings. Imagine strings in the orchestra when they go rom, prom, they retake the bow, a full bow for two notes. Pom, pom, yum, pom. The same. Revolutionary 2 by Chopin. We did it. 
Uh, uh, let's see one last thing here. Uh, Paderewski puts a, a triple F here. Okay, where does it come from? Not sure because it's uh, in parenthesis in the Yannicke edition. So here we go, guys. We did it. Three different editions. I'm sure you have like five different online copies plus Henley and someone's probably got Shermer's there so lots of stuff to compare. Uh, how do you do the staccatos on the last four chords? Hi Dustin, uh, good to see you again. Uh, our piano en Provence, yes. Uh, okay, how do you do the last staccatos? Right, okay, there are staccatos on those notes, isn't that funny, yeah? Uh, we didn't talk about that. Uh, and it's again different in every edition, okay? Uh, let's come back to this. We have here in the uh, online edition, as you can see, there's uh, four staccatos here, right? You got that? Whoops, there we go. In the Paderewski edition, we have these two staccatos on the half notes and a slur written over them like this. If we write it under, it would look like that. And then the staccatos on the last notes are actually carrots. You know, I call them carrots, not just because I eat carrots, um, but they look kind of like this, you know, little triangles there. So, okay, that's Paderewski, which is usually the addition that makes the most <laughs> sense. Uh, what do we have in the Yan Ekie edition? We have only two staccatos on the final two quarter notes. So see, it's different in every edition. Uh, in this case, you know, if there actually are staccatos on the half notes, I think that's just has something to do with the attack. You don't want to do this short. <laughs> that doesn't, the long notes don't make sense short. <laughs> But the last two quarter notes definitely separate between the two. So those are short. Yeah. But not short like super dry short. Yeah. Not that kind of short. Like, you know, quarter notes short. You know, quarter notes with staccatos are different than eighth notes with staccatos. Yeah. Pum. Like you hear the, the resonance of, the, of those notes. This can also depend where you're playing. If you're playing in a, in a hall or a church or a reverberant room or a tunnel, <laughs> you know, or a cellar, then you don't need to do them so, you don't need so much pedal, right? You could do things very short and it's gonna sound great. And then if you play in a very dry room, you need a bit more pedal. <laughs> I pedal both of those uh, notes there. You could put the pedal, right? So pedal every single note here. Yum, pum, yum, pedal, pedal, pedal. So they're not excessively dry. I think that's a good strategy there. Okay, so that ends the revolutionary A2. Thank you for watching, everyone. Uh, sign up for the master class. Uh, I'll be sending an email to you shortly. A few more people wrote. Uh, so the link is already in the description. I just need your email address, a get-together, right? I keep saying this. We won't call it a master class because some people are afraid to play. So it's a get-together. We're just going to get together on Zoom. I don't know how it'll work for all the time zones, but, you know, hopefully we get a few people there. We'll have a few chat, answer some questions. It's not live or anything. Uh, so just uh, follow the link uh, if you want the invite uh, link, the link in the description. And that ends our live stream. So take care, everybody. Uh, thank you for sticking in here. We had a few little things there, a few technical difficulties, little breaks. So thanks for hanging around. And that's it. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Peace. Over and out.